So sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica McCubrey. I am with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. So I am located in the Lincoln office and my position is a wildlife education specialist. So today I want to talk to you about some resources that um, all of you that are free for anyone to check out and use um, and some things that a lot of people maybe not know that Game and Parks has. So <clears throat> one of those things is a lot of people know us as the place where you get your hunting license, your fishing license, you make your camping reservation, um, you call us because you don't like something in the parks, but there's a lot more information that we have out there that a lot of our constituents have no idea about. So one of those things is ecological education. So um, back in 2019, July of 2019, um, Game and Parks got a brand new division. So within our agency, we have the wildlife division, we have fisheries, we have our budget and fiscal, we have law enforcement. Um, recently, as of 2019, we got an entire ecological education division. So um, this might not mean a lot to the average person, but one of the really neat things about it is that we are the only state wildlife agency in the entire country that has a division solely devoted to ecological education. So this simply means that our team is involved in teaching kind of the science behind um, education and the ecology and food webs and using different curriculum to meet those um, objectives that our, our people want to see and the public want to know about. So um, one of the things that's different from a lot of the other states is people have kind of multiple hats that they wear. So the hunter education instructor might also be the person that goes out and teaches you how to go fishing or might be also the same person that teaches you about Project Wild. So um, for us, we are strictly just that ecological education. So we do a lot more than just by your fishing and your hunting licenses. So um, this is kind of just a very small view of what education looks like at Game and Parks, but um, because everything has to be sometimes difficult. So we have lots of different types of education in different divisions. So we have people that are strictly um, here to teach how to go fishing. Um, we have people that teach about um, kind of more outdoor skills. So like campfire cooking and things like how to tie knots and um, how to um, make a fire, that kind of stuff. And then we also have people that do shooting sports like um, our BOW, so Becoming an Outdoors Woman program. So um, we do a lot more, like I said, that ecological education. So our division is strictly focused on things like outdoor classrooms, community science, um, taking kids and families out in nature, um, and what do you do when you get out in nature? So these are just a few of the things that education looks like. We have a youth fishing program. We have something called NASP, which is National Archery in the Schools program. Um, we have family fishing nights, um, nature and family camps, um, Project Wild, which is a national curriculum, um, and I'm the state coordinator, and I will talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit, um, but things like our hunter education courses, community science, trout in the classroom, all those different things. So education looks vastly different um, within our agency, but these are a lot of them. I actually think most of them are statewide programs. So it's not just something that you're going to see in Lincoln and Omaha. It's something that you can see all the way out in Western Nebraska as well. All right. So when we look at this, um, Nebraska Game and Parks has a lot of resources, like I mentioned, that a lot of people have no idea about. We provide resources, materials. We even have things like interdisciplinary lessons. We want to support science teaching. So this is a lot of what we do in our division. Um, I, we found a lot of people in classrooms, they just... Um, they don't have time to teach science, and a lot of the times they don't know how to teach science. So we are here as that support system um, to supplement what a lot of teachers, um, informal and formal, are doing within their classrooms or within their organization. Uh, we also do a lot of state standards, so it's not just we want to talk about habitats, we want to talk about habitats, but also help teachers meet those state standards and those learning objectives um, district by district and also for the entire state too. All right, so one of the ways that we do this, uh, we do a lot of educator workshops. So this looks vastly different depending on what people are interested in, but we do a lot of trainings for informal and formal educators. Um, and so we have education programs, national and ones that we've created um, that helps with that. So some of you might be familiar with something called Project Wild. Uh, so Project Wild is a national curriculum. It's been around since about 1983. 
Um, when it first started, it was like a pamphlet. So very, very tiny. It had a few activities that kind of talked about going outside, wildlife management, population dynamics, basically teaching all that environmental education concepts, but also helping teachers meet, meet learning objectives and also state standards. So um, Project Wild has grown um, and it's changed a lot. So there's actually a very large book um, I can show some of you guys, but it's quite thick. Um, but these are our newest Project Wild guide that we have. So the idea of Project Wild is a hands-on, hands-on, uh, minds-on curriculum. It's geared through K to 12, and we've done tons of workshops for formal and those informal educators. So the idea is it takes a concept such as food webs and it creates a game or it creates a hands-on activity for classrooms or also for anyone to use. It does not have to be formal based. And then because Project Wild has been so successful, successful over the years. Uh, people wanted to see something that wasn't just land animals or terrestrial animals. They wanted something water-based as well. So that kind of sprouted Aquatic Wild. Um, so Aquatic Wild is uh, very similar to Project Wild. It's laid out the same way. It meets the same objectives, but it's done through water or rivers. Um, and if we remember, this is a national program. So one of the things about Aquatic Wild is it has information about manatees, crocodiles, alligators, um, oceans, tide pools, things that we might not be familiar with in Nebraska. Um, but if you are uh, creative enough, you can take those concepts and create uh, different things to make it relevant for your students or for your area in the state. Um, so this one's just a little bit more water-based. It's not quite as thick as Project Wild, um, but it does have a lot of great activities in here, um, just really kind of catering to the water um, and the water reservoir side of that. So both of these are K through 12. Um, the trainings that we do, so I'm the state coordinator for Nebraska Project Wild, and we do free training. So if this is something that you would be interested in, we do trainings throughout the state. Um, I can get Tammy some more information about that, but we do have um, information on our outdoor calendar, our Nebraska Game and Parks calendar, where you can see all of the trainings that are scheduled, and we are constantly adding them as well. And if there's a group of people that are very interested in doing this, we can specifically come out and cater to where you are. So um, like I said, this is a free training. When you finish this training, it's anywhere from uh, four to six hours, just depending on if you wanted both guides, one guide. Um, and then when the completion of the workshop happens, you take these books home with you and they are yours to keep keep in use. So, all right. So because Project Wild and Aquatic Wild have been very successful, the people in the back, especially for the three to seven year old range, they wanted something for early childhood educators. So this sprouted Growing Up Wild. Um, this one's my favorite guide just because it is so pretty. It's colorful. It's laid out. Um, and this features 27 hands-on nature-based activities. So this is one of the examples that it gives on National Project Wild. It's called Fishing Fun. Um, so the yellow box that you see when you open up your curriculum guide, this is like your background information. So what do you personally need to know to be able to do this workshops or this activity? And then it gives you wonderful words. It tells you all of the curriculum and objectives you're meeting. It gives you step-by-step um, -step procedures on how to do the activity. Um, and then it also tells you there's a take me outside box, uh, which you can do any activity outside. Um, so taking this concept of fishing um, and fish interaction and then moving that to an outdoor space as well. Um, this is just one page of the book. There's many pages that go along with these activities, um, but they're all based for that early child childhood educators, like I said, three to seven year olds. Um, this includes art, music, talks about conservation, reading, science, math. So it's really interdisciplinary. It's not just science based concepts. And it also talks about social, emotional, physical language and cognitive domains as well. So it gets a very wide range of topics and themes. Um, this is also another free educator workshop that we do. We probably do way more of these than Project Wild, um, just because there's a lot of need for those early childhood um, education hours and getting those um, needs met by people. So um, this one, like I mentioned, is also free. Same thing we do on the outdoor calendar. Um, you can go and see if there's a workshop scheduled in your area, if you're very interested in doing this. And then this one is only a two hour workshop. Sometimes we can do it about an hour 45 if the needs are different um, for time. And then we can, um, at the 
completion of this workshop, you take this curriculum guide home with you. So the idea is that we come out, we kind of explain how to use this guide, and then you take it home with you and then use it for your school, your library, your students, your kiddos, whoever you're working with. So those are some of the educator workshops that we do that are on a national level. Uh, so every state will have these four things, Growing Up Wild, Project Wild, Aquatic Wild, and then also Flying Wild. Um, this one we do often, maybe twice, three times a year, uh, just simply because there isn't as high of a need for Flying Wild as there is for Growing Up Wild or Project Wild. Um, this is very similar, but this one's all bird-based. So um, this one introduces concepts of bird conservation, um, standard-based classroom activities, but again, involved is in birds. Um, one of the things this is very popular is in the month of May. So Nebraska Game and Parks has kind of designated May as Bird Month. Um, something we'll talk about here in a little bit, but it's coming up in May. Um, if you do a bird-based program, let's say at your library, it could be birds and books. It could be birds and bagels. Whatever you want to do, um, we will, if you fill out a form saying I'm doing this workshop or I'm doing an activity at my library, we can send you some swag, we call it, to kind of supplement that. So this could be things like those rubber bracelets, tattoos, birdologies, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But if you tell us that you're doing this and we help promote your programs because you're helping us doing bird conservation, um, we will give you some swag to kind of help supplement that program with you. So um, that's also something to keep in mind. And then also Flying Wild, um, like we mentioned, we do some of these workshops usually around the month of May, just because that is the time when we see a lot of birds and we celebrate that in Nebraska as bird month. All right, we've also done some what we call advanced trainings or kind of themed workshops. Um, these are just some of the ones that we've done in the past, um, but we do insect investigations, pollinators, bats, birds, um, mammals, amphibians, tall grass prairies, monarchs, all of these different types of things. So um, we create our own uh, kind of curriculum. We do our own activities. So this isn't a national based, but we will come do these workshops for you if you have a group of people that are interested in, let's say, bats. Um, and just kind of helping spread the word about bats and understanding what activities you can do to talk about bats and to talk about our threatened and endangered bats. So um, all of those different kinds of things. So if you see something on here that seems interesting or you're like, oh, I don't really see anything on here, but what if we did this? We can talk and kind of make that work as well. All right, so those were kind of our educator workshops. I do wanna show you some, uh, we call them supplemental publications, but some things like some physical things that you can take and use in your libraries for the summer. Uh, some of you might be familiar with Trail Tales. So Trail Tales just celebrated its 30th year this past year um, in color. It's actually been around for about 35 years, um, but this is our fourth grade specific classroom magazine. So uh, some of you might be familiar with Nebraska Land Magazine, which is kind of our agency magazine. This is like the kid version or the fourth grade version of um, Nebraska land. So every single year, we have a group of people in our agency um, and other places, organizations write articles for Trail Tales, and it's all uh, Nebraska based. So we're talking about science concepts like food webs, animal adaptations, habitats, ecosystems. We also throw in some things like outdoor cooking, outdoor sports, getting kids outside and getting them excited about what's happening within our state. And every student in fourth grade will receive four issues every single year. And this is free for the schools to do. We give about 35,000 copies of Trail Tales out every single year. So we do a fall, winter, spring, and summer. Um, we recently, this last year, just kind of revamped them just because they've been around for a while. Um, and we just kind of need them. We needed a fresh look. Uh, so we updated them just recently here. Um, these are the ones that we had last year. Uh, so we have trail tales. They have fun colors on them. They have lots of information about what's happening in Nebraska uh, and just kind of those different concepts. So here's one all about the scientific method. So understanding when a biologist wants to make a regulation about our deer or wants to ask a question about why are we seeing these animals in Nebraska? What process do we go through to talk about that? So, but making it accessible for that fourth grade level. Um, if you are interested in getting these for your uh, classrooms or for your grandkids or even for um, 
your library. Um, I can send a, a link to where you can order them online. Or if you don't really care if you're getting the you know most recent version, we have lots of um, past issues of Trail Tales that we can give you for programs. So let's say you're doing a program on foxes or you wanna talk about mammals in Nebraska and you wanna give out something at your program. We can send you a bunch of past issues of Trail Tales and each kid can take one home with them. So that is something that we have as well um, if you are interested in those. So, um, and also they do have like games and puzzles and things in them. And then for each Trail Tales that goes out to the schools, each issue has a teacher guide that goes with it. So talking a little bit more in depth about the article and then also um, what can they do as well. So giving them Project Wild activities, giving them how to get outside and, you know, teach this concept of population dynamics into a fourth grader. And here's some more things that you can do with it. So basically we're, we're giving you all the answers and all the information because we want people to teach about these things. We want people to be passionate about Nebraska. And so we're giving you all this information so that you can help us out with that. So Trail Tales is something that's pretty popular. Um, I personally love it because I'm the editor of Trail Tales, but I also think it's a very cool um, science thing. And there's very, very, very few agencies in the country that give these out to the school. So as long as we have that fun to do it, um, we are glad to do it. All right, we also have a set of posters. We've had these for a while, so some of you might be familiar with them, um, but we have six posters that recognize like our top 25 of each category. So this is mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians, plants, insects, fish. Um, on one side, you have this really pretty color, colorful thing about what are the top 25 when you think of fish in Nebraska, here's what our biologist said. Um, the idea is that they are kind of placed in Nebraska where you would see them. If there were some fish that are found statewide, we just kind of found a place for them. But the idea is that some of these fish, like the paddlefish, is only found in a very specific spot in Nebraska. This is this fish right here with that long rostrum or that long paddle-shaped thing on its snout. Um, they're only found in certain areas of Nebraska, so we place them on the eastern side. And then because we don't expect people to know everything about every animal, um, if you flip the poster on the back, there's a little tiny information about each of the fish that's on there. So uh, we do these as a set, or if you're doing a fish program or a mammal program and you're like, hey, can I get 25 of those biodiversity mammal posters? Let us know and we will send them to you. So um, each poster set is colored differently. Um, I think I have, yes. So like our amphibian and reptile one, these are folded, um, but they do look very similar. Um, one of them's orange, one of them's yellow, one of them's green. So it's a poster set. So if you're like, can I get 10 sets of those posters? Let us know and we will send them to you. So they're really good to kind of supplement um, a program or also if you're like, I just really like them. And I want people to know about what we have in Nebraska as far as our species go. They're kind of fun just to hang up as well. All right, um, these that we have as well. So threatened and endangered species are something that even Nebraska, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get away from. We have threatened and endangered species. And when a lot of people go to talk about threatened and endangered species, they talk about clouded leopards and elephants and giraffes. Think about some of the things that we have here in Nebraska. People are more likely to walk outside their front door and see a meadowlark or a bat or um, a pronghorn than they are a giraffe or a polar bear. Um, so we really wanna highlight what species we have here in Nebraska and what we are doing to help those species. So Nebraska has about 30, uh, give or take 30 threatened and endangered species. Um, and so there's a few of them that we have printed still, but they are all online that you can go check out as well. So here's just kind of a screenshot of one of them. This is one of our endangered plants because no one ever thinks about plants. This is something called blowout penstemon. Um, it's this really pretty purple flower that's only found in what are called blowouts of the sand hill area. Um, so if you drop down these boxes, you can click what is the description? What is the range? What is the habitat of this? So um, these are a little bit more 
I'd probably say towards the adulter side, adult end of um, as far as the reading goes and the level of reading, but they do have very good information and it gives people a good idea of what we have here in Nebraska. Uh, we have a few of these ready if you wanted to print copies of them. We don't have all of them printed, but all of them are online. So you can check out this website here. Um, it's just outdoornebraska.gov slash endangered species. And it will take you to the list of the different types of endangered species that we have. And you can go to all of them and click on one and see all this information for every single one of them. All right, uh, some of you might have also seen these as well. Um, these are actually in the process of getting redone just because again, updating different types of things. They kind of look kind of 80s reminiscent here. So we want to update them and bring them into 2024. So um, we will have these available. I'm not sure if the new updated ones will be this year or if it will kind of be a 2025 thing, but they're in the process of getting updated. So these are our Nebraska tracks matching game. Um, so the idea is that you get this booklet, this Nebraska wildlife tracks. When you open it up, it gives you about 20 different types of animals in Nebraska and what their tracks look like. It also gives you a very, very short information about what they eat, where they're found, um, what kind of habitat do these animals live in. And these are going to be common things that everyone in the state is going to see. Things like herons, beavers, uh, snapping turtles. So it's going to show you the animal and then the track and then a little information about them. Uh, and then the idea is also there's a set of cards um, that has a picture of the animal on one card and then front foot and back foot. So the idea is that kids can match the front foot and the back foot with the animal. And then to check to see if you are correct, you can look in this Nebraska Wildlife Tracks guide to see if your answers are correct. So this is an answer key and then also the cards that come with it. Um, so if you're like, hey, can I get 30 of these for my um, mammal program that I'm going to do, um, let us know and we can send them to you. So these are actually really popular. And like I mentioned, they're getting updated um, just to kind of, you know, keep up with the times. Um, so we do have these, um, but we will be probably getting new ones in 2025 as well. But again, a very cool hands-on concept that talks about animal tracks and habitats and the animal biodiversity that we have here in our state. All right. We also have Ology Magazine. So um, every single thing in the world has a national day. There's like National Pretzel Day, National Pudding Day, um, National Stop Sign Day, all of these things. So we celebrate a lot of animals in Nebraska. Um, so I mentioned earlier that May is Bird Month. So we have designated that as Bird Month in Nebraska. We have Pollinator Week, which we celebrate. Um, it's usually about kind of towards the end of June. I'm not sure the exact dates for 2024. And then in October, we celebrate as a reptile month. To do this, we also have what are called Ology Magazines. So these are very similar to Trail Tales. Um, however, they're topic specific. So Pollinator Ology, for instance, is everything you wanted to know about pollinators. So what is a pollinator? What pollinators do we have in Nebraska? What can you do to help pollinators? So there are uh, articles. And then with every article, there's a um, kind of a thought provoking game, puzzle, that kind of thing. Um, for instance, have you um, can you match the eye spots with the um, different types of butterflies? Or with our newly renovated, we have a reptile ology, which is my favorite because I'm a reptile person. Um, so this is what our reptile ology looks like. I don't know if anyone knows what this beautiful turtle is, but this is our Blandings turtle. Um, they have that bright yellow chin on them. So very similar to Trail Tales, but this one's all about reptiles. So talking about what a herpetologist is. If anyone knows what a herpetologist is, it's someone that studies reptiles and amphibians. A biologist that studies reptiles and amphibians. Um, but it goes through just kind of different topics in Nebraska. What are our turtles? Um, what are some snakes that we have in Nebraska? What are our lizards? How to help these animals? Um, and they have some really cool, like, fun facts about them. So the magazines are packed with information. And then at every single um, article, there's kind of that thought-provoking thing. So for instance, um, the article on about how to be a herpetologist, it asks at the very bottom, what would you think would be the coolest thing about being a herpetologist? So after reading the article, you kind of do that activity. So these are also free if you're like, can I get 25 of the reptileologies or can I get 10 of the pollinatorologies? 
Um, these are also one of the things I mentioned earlier about bird month. If you do an activity um, related to birds at your library and you let us know, um, we send you a survey that says, hey, would you like any of these resources? What resources would you want? Birdology is one of those things that you can get if you do um, a program about birds sometime in May. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. We actually don't have the amphibianology anymore. Um, we just um, split them. So we have the reptile one, and then we'll work on the amphibian one later. But we have birdology, pollinatorology, reptileology. And we also have a wetlandology. We don't have very many of those, but we do have that available um, in a limited capacity too. All right, so those were kind of our publications or our resources that we have. Um, we also have some things that people can check out for free. Um, so we have education trunks and kits throughout the state. Some of you may be familiar with these, some of you might not, um, but Project Wild or our Nebraska Wildlife Education Division has trunks and hands-on materials that you can check out. So any organization can check these out, they're for free. Um, if you go to our website here, um, and I can include that with Tammy, um, but if you can check out every single trunk that we have in Nebraska or the kits, and it will let you know every single inventory list. So for instance, we have a mammal trunk. If you click on the mammal trunk on our website, it drops down and says, here's every single skull that's in there. Here's every single pelt. Here's every single rubber track, um, every single book that's in there. And so you can kind of use that to kind of cater to your programs. Um, and then we also have things like a binocular kit, a life cycle kit. We recently have a brand, kind of brand new aquatic education kit. We have a reading the wild, which is kind of taking signs and understanding what you're seeing outside. Um, like if you see poop, if you see a feather. Uh, we also have, um, it's not on here. They're kind of brand new. A lot of people have not checked them out. We have critter cam kits. So we have um, in certain areas of Nebraska, we have trail cameras that you can um, get in a kit. You can set them up. You can download those photos that you get um, and kind of see what you're getting out there. So it's like a long-term science project. Um, so there's quite a few kits. Uh, we do have, these are some of the ones that we have uh, located across Nebraska. Uh, not every single uh, area has every single kit. Um, but within hopefully some close distance, you can find the kit that you're looking for. Um, if you just go to our website, you can search for the kits and it will tell you the email and the phone number that you can call. And you just say, hey, um, I'm really interested in the mammal trunk. Can I check that out between June 27th and July 19th? It looks like it's available. You come pick it up at that location, you use it, and then you bring it back. It's totally free. So you just have to call and make a reservation so that we know you're coming and that also what kit you're like, what you would like, and if it's available at that time. All right, we also have a little bit larger um, kit trunk trailer. It's a Nebraska outdoor trailer. Um, these are located in North Platte, Lincoln, Scotts Bluff, and Norfolk, um, but it's a six foot by 10 foot V-neck trailer that you uh, check out from us. And it's kind of for larger scale events. Um, this is also free to check out. Anyone can check it out as long as it's available. Um, it has 13 activities kind of ready to go. If you open the trailer doors, there are a bunch of shelves with um, Rubbermaid totes and it says binocular kit. You open it up. Here's the directions on what you do for this activity. You use it, you put them back and then you bring the tr uh, trailer back to us. So this one, we do about a week checkout. Trunks, we do a little bit longer, about two weeks. Um, but again, this is free. You just call the location and say, hey, I'd really like to pick up that North Platte trailer. Is it available on this day? I'd like to use it. You come pick it up. You hitch it up to your own car. You take it, you use it, and you bring it back. Uh, this also has things like Easy Up Tents in it. If you were going to do like a large scale festival, it has uh, folding chairs. It has tables, plastic tables that you can use. Pretty much everything you need to do, this, these activities, is in this trailer. So it just doesn't come with a person to run it. You have to find those volunteers on your own. 
All right. And then I do want to mention this because I know a lot of people have kind of taken um, advantage of this, but we do some programming. Um, we are a very small team. We have six of us here in the Lincoln office, and we have uh, two partnership positions in Scotts Bluff and one in Norfolk. Um, we do have some programming available. However, it is limited just because we have such a small team. Um, we do have a program request form that's new this year. So if you are interested in having someone come out and bring animals or talk about habitats or bring skulls and pelts, um, we do have a program request form. If you fill that out, we will get back to you um, saying whether we can complete this or we cannot complete this. Um, but we do have those other supplemental resources as well. So if a person can't come out, we have trunks, we have trailers, we have websites, we have stuff we can give you. So um, we understand our programming is limited, but we also want to be able to meet your needs as well. So um, if you are interested in that, I can include big email to Tammy and then she can kind of disseminate that information, but it will have that program request on it. It's just a Google form. You fill it out. What do you want us to do? When would you like us to be there? How many people do you need? all the information, and then we look it over, see if it works with our schedule, um, and then we can get back to you whether we will be able to do that or not. We do have two seasonal educators, hopefully starting in mid-March or so and kind of running through maybe mid-November, um, which kind of helps increase our programming a little bit. Um, last year, we had Bree and Ann, um, two of our seasonals. They were awesome, and they were able to go out and do a lot of this programming, kind of boots on the ground programming. Um, so we're hoping that we can have two seasonals again this year that can complete some of this. All right, I do want to spend just a little bit of time um, there's three of us here in the office. Um, we have someone, myself is the wildlife educator. We have someone that is an aquatic resource educator, and then we have a community science coordinator. So we have three education specialists that all kind of have diverse areas. And there's a lot of cool aquatic resources as well that a lot of people don't think of. Um, so we have Trout in the Classroom. Uh, Grace Gard is our coordinator for Trout in the Classroom. She's in full swing. We just sent out um, like 22,000 eggs last year, um, or sorry, last week. Um, um, and we have uh, classrooms that have tanks and chillers where they raise baby trout all the way from eggs to about fingerlings, which is about this size, in their classroom. And then they are able to use a curriculum to go along with that. So this is everything from students learning about watersheds in Nebraska and animals in Nebraska, but then also understanding the responsibilities of trout. And then the idea is that when the trout are large enough, they do kind of a field trip towards the end of the year in the spring, and they release their trout back into the wild. So we have about 100 schools that participate um, in Nebraska this year. Um, and so here's some of the interesting things. Uh, we do have frozen trout that we shipped out to teachers if they requested it, where they can learn dissection. So these are students dissecting a trout. And then this is about the size of a fingerling. So when you students go to release their trout in the spring, this is about the size that they are. They give them a name and they say, okay, Henry, go ahead and make it in the wild. So um, this is something that is available uh, <clears throat> to go along with that we have our aquatic ecology trunk. So this is something that people can check out. There's books, there's nets, bins, magnifiers, there's scoops, there's an activity guide, identification sheets. This is more for people that wanna kind of explore a creek or explore your wetland. Um, really it's for like macro invertebrates. If you're not familiar with a macro invertebrate, it's the tiny things that you can see with your eyes. Um, if you take a scoop of water, there's stonefly larva, dragonfly larva, there's snails, there's all these different types of things that live in the water. Um, and so why do we look at those things? Um, this is all kind of answered in that eco ecology trunk. So giving you all the things to go out and do that um, in a trunk and a kit. And again, these are free to check out. Um, that website online will tell you where you can get these and which locations have them. Oh, here you go. Omaha, Lincoln, Kearney, Norfolk, Valentine, and Scotts Bluff have one of these trunks. Again, you just call and say, hey, I'd like to check out the aquatic ecology trunk. Is it available during these dates? Oh, it is. Thank you. You come pick it up. You use it. You bring it back. All right. Some other things um, as far as wetlands. So there was a partnership. <clears throat> there is a partnership still between the Platte Basin Time Lapse um, and the Nebraska Game Parks Commission, Nebraska Cooperative Fish and Wildlife Research Unit, and Ducks Unlimited that wanted to explore wetlands. So this is a fifth grade topic in Nebraska, um, just understanding and increasing the awareness of the value that wetlands play in our state. Um, people know us as a prairie state, 
but we also have quite a few acres of wetlands in Nebraska, and we have lots of different types of wetlands in Nebraska. Um, so here's some wetland resources. These are amazing, by the way. Um, they were used a lot of different technology, things like time-lapse cameras, camera traps, underwater photography, drones, and they created this amazing set of videos and um, that kind of tells it through storytelling. So Michael Forsberg was part of this, if anyone's familiar with him. He's kind of a celebrity photographer, I guess, conservation photographer from the from Nebraska. Um, but there's also a guide for adults that um, is printed that you can request. And then we mentioned earlier those wetlandology books for students. So there's videos designs for student learning. Um, it came up, it says here in September 20, uh, 2022. Um, so if you go to NebraskaWetlands.com, you can kind of view all the different types of them um, and see these beautiful videos and the storytelling that kind of goes along with wetlands. All right, there's also FINS, Fishing in Nebraska Schools. So this is a program designed for grades four to 12, um, and it provides educators with training equipment materials about fishing. So the idea is that if you are interested in this, you can become a youth fishing instructor. You simply take this course, and then you have all this access to fishing supplies. You can come grab trailers, you open the trailer up, and there's fishing rods, there's reels, there's bait, there's all this stuff to go fishing somewhere in your area. And there's quite a few of these. Um, if you are interested, this is actually Larry Pape. Um, his email is down here, larrypape at nebraska.gov. He's kind of in charge of this idea, uh, but you can uh, go to our Game and Park site and search FINS, Fishing in Nebraska Schools, and it will come up with some activities. Um, but then to gain access to these fishing supplies, you will need to take that youth fishing instructor course. Um, and you can get that information from Larry um, at LarryPape at Nebraska.gov. All right, and then we just have some kind of other things, fish related resources. So there's a ton of family fishing nights. You can find those on our website. I'm sure the dates are probably pretty much set, um, but you can go to these areas um, and someone brings that trailer, opens it up and says, would you like to go fishing? You grab a pole and they help you do everything. They want people to understand how to go fishing. And then you can fish for free um, and then give the pole back at the end of the night. There's also Nebraska State Fish Arch Art Contest, which has a March deadline. It is actually through Wildlife Forever, but we kind of like sponsor that as well. Um, and so there's a contest, you just draw um, a fish, a native fish, and then there's a voting process. Um, there's lots of information online. We have this thing called a Whiskers and Friends. It's a coloring book. And then we also have this little guide, the Common Fishes of Nebraska, which is colored. And again, if this is something you're interested in, we can send you information on these or physically send you copies of the Whisker coloring book or the Common Fish of Nebraska booklet as well. All right, something else that is um, kind of a, just a resource online, you can look, we have a Game and Parks Education YouTube channel. So on here, here's just a screenshot of some of the things that we have, um, but this is all education resources. So for instance, we have a bunch of these things called conservation career chats. Um, so this was different careers at Game and Parks that a lot of people don't think of. So things like a park superintendent or an invasive, um, species biologist or our zoologist or our public relations manager. So kind of just like an informal interview about what do they do and their career at Game and Parks and how that helps conservation. So those are free to watch. And as you can see here, we have things like snakes of Nebraska. We have stuff about feathered architects. We have fish adaptations. We have wildlife jeopardy. Um, there's also an entire thing about a um, virtual program called Science Of, uh, and this talks about just different types of nature topics, and we really get in depth about them. So things like um, corvids, which if you don't know what a corvid is, blue jay, a crow, a magpie, all those different animals and kind of the in-depth science behind them. So their range, why are they so smart, how they hold funerals, all these different things. So there's lots of different playlists that you can look at um, on here, but here's just kind of a screenshot of some of the things that we have on our Game and Parks Education YouTube channel. All right, and so that was kind of what I have for you. Um, 
if you want to connect with us and find some more information, um, I put me and Grace on here. Um, so Grace, like I mentioned, she's trapped in the classroom. She's kind of our wetland person. She's our aquatic ecology education specialist. She has all that information. And then I'm the wildlife education specialist. So if you have any information or like you want to connect with us or you want to get some stuff, let us know. Um, so there's our two emails and I can certainly send this with Tammy again as well. Um, but that was what I have. So I just didn't know um, if anyone has any questions or anything you, that you need me to um, kind of go more in depth about or anything like that. Any questions, anyone? If not, it means you ate great information that was all clear. Yeah. Or I just gave you so much stuff that you just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> One of those things. So, <laughs> yeah, and I can certainly send Tammy all that information to you about the websites and the links if you would like to do a program request or um, just the links to all those things. So if you have any questions or if you would like some physical stuff, please let us know. We can certainly send that to you. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Tammy, are you good to go? You got your recording and everything? Yes, we're all great. Thank you so much. Okay. For yeah, no. Great. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for being flexible. I really appreciate it. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Next year, maybe in person. Let's hope so. <laughs> right. Thank yep. you. Thank you so much.